I searched for an answer to this question for a long time. How on earth do I move a blur effect around a design so the background continues to blur in real time? Surely there must be a way to do this in Illustrator, right? And the good news is, yes, there is, but it's not immediately obvious. And in this video, I'm going to reveal the hidden technique to get this to work, and also how to create a fully editable, realistic glass effect. And it's an effect that once you've created it once, you can apply it to a shape or some text, whatever you like, in just one click. So first up, let's take a look at that blur. So I've created my new document, 3840 by 2160, and now I'm going to place an image. And you could do this with any image, but just make sure to uncheck the link box and then click place. Now let's click to place, and then we can position this in the center of the artboard. Next, go to object, down to lock, and selection, just so we don't move it around by mistake. Next, select the rectangle tool, and click and drag to draw a box. I'm going to use the align panel to make sure this is definitely in the center, and then click and drag on those corner widgets just to round off the corners. Now, slight oopsie, I do need that background, so I'm going to unlock everything, drag over the background and the box to select them, and then go to edit, copy, and then zoom out lots, and then go back up to edit, and select paste in place. Now holding shift and using the right arrow key, I'm going to nudge these out of the way, and again, I'm going to select the background and the box, and then go to Object, down to Clipping Mask, and select Make. This will crop the image to that box. Okay, let's zoom out again and select the uncropped version of the background, hold Shift, and nudge it back into position with the arrow keys. Now we will need to send this to the back, so let's right click, go to Arrange, and select Send to Back. And of course, nothing actually happens because they're on top of each other, but if I move the cropped image out, you can see that it is actually still there. Next, I'm going to double click on that clipping group to go inside. And once inside, I can drag around to adjust the crop. Now we don't actually need to do that, but it is useful to know. Next, go to effect, down to blur, and select Gaussian blur. Pick any value here that you like, but don't worry, we can change this later on. Click OK once you're happy, and then double click anywhere around the edge to exit the clipping group. And whilst we've created a lovely blur, you can see the problem. If I move it, the crop moves as well. And this ain't no good. No, it is not. So how do we move the blur effect around with the frame? So let's switch over to the layers panel and expand down layer one. And you can see we have our clip group there. Now let's go ahead and expand the clip group down and we can see what's inside. We have the box on top and we have the image. Now my panel is a bit squished, but if you make it bigger, you can see the layer names. And what I need to do is select the rectangle layer and click that dot alongside. This indicates that this sub layer is now selected and I can now hover my mouse over the edge of the shape, whether it's to move it, rotate it or resize it. But do not click and select on the main body of the shape because it will take the crop along with it and we don't want that. If you do that by mistake, just select this dot again, make sure you click on the frame and now when you move it around, that blur moves around with you in real time. Time. And as I mentioned, you can also rotate and resize the rectangle and the blur will update as you do it. And you can also adjust the corner radius as well. So basically anything that affects the properties of the rectangle, the blur effect will update along with it. And there we go, we have a delicious blur effect, but what are some of the advantages to doing this when designing? So one use is this could be part of a UI design. You have a box in the middle that needs to be taller. You now need the edges square. You might want to make it a bit wider. You might want to move it out. Oh, you can see I've done the thing again. Damn you idiot. So don't click on the body of the shape. Once you've selected the dot, click on the edge of the shape instead. So now we could move this over. Oh, what's going on? So we could have this on the left if we wanted a large area blurred out. It's entirely up to you. But for now, let's pop it back in the center. Okay, so the blur is looking pretty good. Now let's zoom back out. And we're going to grab that rectangle on the right, hold shift and nudge that back into the center. This is going to be for the glass effect. So let's switch back to the properties panel, select the rectangle, and then go to the gradient panel. I've got mine docked here on the right hand side, but if you don't see it, just go to window and you'll find it down here. So for this next bit, I'm going to split the screen in two so you can see what I'm doing. So from the gradient panel, I'm going to click anywhere on the slider to activate the default gradient. I can double click on the black and then from the swatches tab, I can select white as the color. I can now double click on the swatch at the other end and make sure that this is white too. Now for the one on the left, I'm going to change the opacity to something like 10%, nice and low. And then the one on the right, I'm going to change this to, let's go for 50. So we get this gradual transparency. 
Now from this box here, we can also adjust the angle of the gradient so we can have it going from left to right, from top to bottom. I'm going to go for about 40 degrees. Now if you do make the mistake of adding another swatch, simply drag it off the slider to remove it. And if I drag this swatch over, you can see the gradient now sits more in that top right corner. So play around with the location of the swatches until you get something you're happy with. And for the next step, we need to select the stroke, which is basically the shape's outline. And if we click on the gradient slider, it remembers that previous gradient. And I can now change the opacity on both swatches to something a little bit higher just so those edges stand out more and again I'm going to put in the same 40 degree angle because the light's coming from the top right now let's thicken up that stroke weight now that's probably a bit much but you can see we have this double stroke effect going on if you want that great but we don't so let's change where we align the stroke so to get around that double stroke issue let's align this to the outside now it's still way too thick so let's reduce that stroke weight down a bit and this effect tends to work best when it's really thin and really subtle okay let's close down the gradient panel and then go and select the rectangle and go to the appearance panel. Now click this icon at the bottom to add a new fill. And from the swatch drop down, let's change this to black. Now from the effects icon, let's go down to artistic and select film grain. This brings up a separate window where you've got a few sliders to customize the grain effect. But for now, let's just crank all of these to the maximum so we get a nice grain with plenty of contrast. Now go to the opacity menu and change the blending mode to something like overlay or soft light. Now you can see this grain effect, it's pretty intense. So let's dial that back a bit by again going to the opacity box and typing in a lower value. I think I'll go for somewhere around 14. That looks pretty good, nice and subtle. But you can see there is a bit of a problem. We appear to have lost our stroke. So let's select this again. And from the appearance panel, I'm going to drag the stroke to the top of the layer stack. I mean, they're not actually layers, but they work in the same way. And actually I made the mistake of adjusting the main opacity for the whole shape. So let's crank that up because every effect actually has its own opacity in the appearance panel. So if I change the opacity from here instead, this will only change the opacity for the film grain effect. So now the effect is added correctly and the stroke is still visible. Yeah, looking pretty good. Now remember, we have two elements to this design. We have the blur effect and we now have the glass effect. So let's just drag that out to make sure it's selected and then go up to window and down to graphic styles. This brings up a separate panel and we can now drag the glass object into the panel and this is now saved so we can reuse it anytime. So if I just quickly create a shape, we simply have to go ahead and click on that glass style and there we go, those same properties are instantly applied. So you'll never have to create glass ever again. Okay, let's get rid of those. So we've just spent the last few minutes setting everything up, but how do we change the image without having to recreate everything from scratch? Because we do not want to do that. So for this step, go up to Window and down to Links. As you might imagine, this will open the Links panel and this lists all images in the document. So let's select one and relink it. I'm going to change this to a different image. So there's one. Now let's select the other image in the Links panel relink it and select that same image again. And doing it this way enables us to change the image and keep everything in the same position. So there we go, the new image is looking great, but I think that blur is just a pinch too strong. So how do we go back into the image so we can make changes to that blur effect? So first of all, let's select the glass object and lock this. I'll just check I've got the blur layer selected. Yes, I have, good. Now we can double click the blur layer to go inside. And because we've got the image selected, we have that blur we applied right at the beginning and we can now adjust this to a different value. You can also press escape to quickly exit the clipping group. And there we go, we've successfully changed the image and everything is still fully editable. And if you'd like to learn how to create more awesome fully editable text effects in Illustrator, you will definitely want to check out this video right here. See ya.